Welcome to the Stetzer Church Leaders Podcast, conversations with today's top ministry leaders to help you lead better every day. And now, here are your hosts, Ed Stetzer and Daniel Yang. Welcome to the Stetzer Church Leaders Podcast, where we're helping Christian leaders navigate and lead through the cultural issues of our day. My name is Daniel Yang, the director of the Church Multiplication Institute, and today we have Eric Geiger with us. Eric is a senior pastor of Mariner's Church in Irvine, California, and before moving to Southern California, he served as senior vice president for Lifeway Christian Resources. Eric's authored or co-authored several books, including Design to Lead, The Church and Leadership Development with Kevin Peck, and the best-selling book co-authored with Tom Rainer, Simple Church, Returning to God's Process for Making Disciples. But first, let's go to Ed Stetzer, Editor-in-Chief of Outreach Magazine and the incoming Dean of the Talbot School of Theology. Okay, well, th- thanks, Daniel, for introducing us. Uh, you know, one of the things that Daniel didn't mention is that Eric and I have been very close friends for uh, over a decade and really love working with him. And one of the things I've seen, I've seen him up close as a leader. And when I teach leadership at, uh, at we've been teaching at Wheaton, now teaching some at uh, Talbot, um, I actually will quote Eric's writings, but also I'll use examples of Eric where I saw Eric lead this way or that way. And, uh, and one of the ways that Eric has led well that I've learned from is actually on developing a leadership pipeline. Now, there's, I mean, there's actually whole like books and resources on how to develop a pipeline. But it appears to me that one of the areas where pastors and church leaders struggle, our audience, is helping to develop people, having a systematic process of developing people from disciples to their leadership roles and more. Eric's written on this. Daniel mentioned some of those resources as well. So Eric, I mean, just give us a general idea, because I think the idea of pipeline that's pretty new language for a lot of people in the church world. Um, I mean, it sort of makes sense. People get what it is. But what does it mean to have a leader, have a pipeline or pipelines in your church? Yeah, a leadership pipeline is basically a framework that helps you think about how to develop leaders or how to develop people. And so you're, you're grabbing a leader from the beginning stages of that person's journey and what do you hope the person becomes and how do you develop the person to become to become that kind of leader it's so it's a you know you you could think about if you're a pastor you could think about it in terms of um how how do i develop how do i use my sermons to take people to a certain place if you have a a sermon plan over time if you're in a teacher, you know, you have a scope and sequence, you know, here's what I'm going to teach people over time. A leadership pipeline is not only about teaching, but it's about the competencies that you want developed in in people. And it sounds so complex oftentimes because it, it sounds so technical. It doesn't have to be super complex. You And I can I can talk about, you know, simple ways to, to think about it. But in general terms, Ed, a leadership pipelines, a systematic way to think about developing people. A systematic way to think about developing people. Okay, because I mean, and at Mariners, that's, um, you, know, you wrote a book, Simple Church, but there comes a, a point and a size where even simple is hard with the complexity of a large organization. But people sort of know that they're like our staff has a pipeline of development. Our, uh, I'm going to talk to our interns uh, pretty soon here at our Mariners uh, team. I don't think I mentioned this. So I'm I'm actually a part of the uh, the Mariners Church Team. I'm a scholar in residence and teaching pastor. Just one of the reasons I said yes to be at Talbot School of Theology was just because I wanted to serve alongside Eric. I think he's a great leader. Okay, so but you know most of, most of the people listen to Stetzer Church Leaders podcast, and we haven't done like a study. But my guess is they're in churches between two and seven hundred. Um, there's some some smaller church pastors, but probably most would be in that range. So what could somebody at a church of of you know two to three hundred do? to begin to develop leaders when they don't have all the, like they don't have a staff member whose job is developing volunteers, but that's something they do at every level. Right. Um, okay. So for, first I want to answer the question of like, Hey, how does this fit in with, you know, simple church? Right. I mean, I, I don't, this sounds very complex. I would say a, a leadership pipeline stops you from getting really complex because if you don't have a leadership pipeline, what you'll end up having is a ton of different nomenclature titles of of people in, in in different volunteer roles in your church you'll have just all over the place pl- different decentralized developmental pathways training happen in this area in this area that's not coordinated at all 
So, so actually having a leadership pipeline enhances simplicity. It just, if you think about simple church as your discipleship process for the whole church, a leadership pipeline is your leadership, your discipleship process for, for leaders. You know, it's how do you, how do you disciple people? So, so I'm in a church of 300. Um, what I, what I would initially try and do is what's the layers of leadership in my church? So like start with who shepherds and cares for people. You know, you, you could start with, okay, we've got 20 Sunday school teachers. We have 15 greeters. We have, you know, 13 leaders in the youth ministry. Okay. So these people, that's great. Okay. Who, um, who oversees them or encourages them or shepherds them? Well, we have some director. Well, one area we call a director and one area we call it a coach and one area we call it uh, a super volunteer, <laughs> you know, but we have a group of people that direct and you're like, well, how, how do I know who they are? Okay. Here's how you know. When the Sunday school teacher gets sick on Saturday night, who does that Sunday school teacher call? Who's going to help find a oh, replacement, good. you know? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. And so then who oversees that group of people? Well, that's the minister of education or the associate pastor or, you know, who, whoever it is. So you basically, you identify the natural levels of leadership that you already have. All right. So that's, that, that's your pipeline. You, you, people progress from one area to another in terms of their responsibility. It doesn't mean that they're moving up in their value or they're becoming, um, a better Christian. It just means that their their scope of leadership responsibilities at the church is, is um, expanding. In fact, some people don't want that to happen. They want to stay the 10th grade guys, small group leader, and that's awesome. We Which, yeah, make- mother, we're not a, we think that's great, but you're yes. looking for people also who might. That's right. You know, some of those leaders that. could be a coach over a group of 10th grade leaders or a group of all high school leaders, right? Um, but we don't want to make the 10th grade leader feel like he's a failure if he doesn't become a coach over the others. So first, identify the layers of leadership you have. Th- this right here will be will, will help you all, all right away. Go ahead and have the same name for all of those for all of those people. So at where I serve, it's it's we have volunteer, leader, coach, senior coach. And so and that's, and that's what we do at Mariners. Yep. Yeah, I got to keep up with these things. I'm still new, so I got to yeah. learn that. Well, so, okay, we have you. You're developing at you. We have you developing at the director and pastor level. Okay, but so so but we have you know if you start with a greeter, uh, actually you start before that. Start with someone who volunteers to be a greeter on Easter, or someone who volunteers for an outreach ministry. They haven't gone to leader yet. They're a volunteer. So then, so that's volunteer. Then leader becomes they have to agree to our statement of faith. They have to agree to our lifestyle commitment um that they have to 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 agree to where we're headed as a church what we believe how we live they then are a leader right so that could be um a high school life group leader it could be a a rooted bible study leader could be um a, a regular consistent greeter someone who serves in our outreach ministry so that's a leader and then there's a coach and the coach oversees and shepherds and cares for leaders. And then there's senior coaches um, and those people oversee coaches now. Um, and that's all volunteer positions at, at our church. Uh, oftentimes, you know, again, the church of 300 to 700, you may just have volunteer leader coach and then staff members, you know, and that's great. It's totally great. Just get a sense of what the layers are and then use the same language so that that helps. So that, Again, if you don't do this, you're actually more complex because right. everyone has so different that's titles. Simplifying. So you're simplifying yeah. by saying these are who these people are and what these people do, yep. even though they might do them in different places with different people. Yes. Okay. So that's the first step. And and I mean, that, that takes some time, but that will simplify. Then the second step is, okay, what are the competencies that you want to develop leaders on? And when I coached my daughter's soccer team, I, I read like three books on how to coach, you know, elementary kids soccer. Can I just and, tell you that I am so like you're so much a better person than I am to coach your children's soccer team. I'm very impressed a, by that. It, the, the time was so fun, man. But every one of those books said, hey, you can't just go to practice and work on everything. You got to identify, like do dribbling this practice, do 
you know, shooting this practice, passing this practice. Basically, it's not rocket science, you, but you do got to know what you're working on. So identify what what your competencies are for leaders. And so at at our church, at Mariners, we have we've identified six. Um, it's discipleship, vision, stewardship, people development, um, collaboration, and I, I might have missed one, but but every so then the, so if you had a sheet of paper on the left side have the layers volunteer leader coach senior coach right you have on the left side on the top have the competencies discipleship vision i did miss one strategy people development collaboration stewardship so then you just make the boxes okay the the someone who's a leader here's what we want them to know about stewardship um when they're a senior coach, here's what we want them to know about stewardship. Um, and you just, you just, you just start and you can tweak it. You don't have to, you don't have to, and it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be perfect. It's it's better to have an imperfect play than no play. So you're just, you're just mapping out how you're going to think about somebody being developed. Now, when you, um, Map it out. So, and I yep. get that. And then um, when we think of pipeline, and I'm enough of a nerd to know that the first pipeline was built in Pennsylvania that delivered oil and, uh, and it actually flowed downhill, thousand feet. Everyone's so excited about it. And, uh, in the 18, mid 1800s. Um, but we think of something moving. I mean, it's, it's going somewhere. So you have these competencies you want to develop. But what's the process? And again, I, I, I think it's actually helpful for you to explain a little bit like what it's like at a larger church like Mariners. But then, what would it look like? What is forward progress? Pipelines move stuff through a pipe. Uh, in this case, wonderful people. Um, what does it look like to see them move and how do you help them move in that process, both in the large church and maybe the church of the 300? So Ram Sharan wrote a book. It's a business book, but it's called Leadership Pipeline. Right. And we read that like at Lifeway, didn't we? Yeah, Wasn't that like it, a thing when we were vice presidents together? We, I think I think uh, Tom Rayner had a man crush on uh, Ram Sharan. So oh, I gosh. Think. He has read, every, every time he had a book, we got to read it. And we, I just want to say, if Tom Rayner, because I'm sure he listens, we really enjoyed reading all those books. Oh, every one of them. I, I mean, we... We we still appreciate how Tom Rainer shepherded our hearts so so well with all of those books that um that we read. We we are both Tom Rainer fans. I am to the day I die. I'm a massive yeah, Tom Rainer exactly. fan. The books were good. Yes. Um. So, Ram Sharan says most leadership development initiatives fail for one reason. Like this is the one reason this fails. And it's it's like wow. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna boil it down to one reason, and here's it. Gets it. Your attention. Yeah. yeah, here's what it is. Um, people are trained for their current job, not their future job. So when you have a leadership pipeline, what you want to do is to answer your question about movement is you want to train people for their next role. For those who want to know, to move forward, again, if the 10th grade guy's leader just wants to be a 10th grade guy's leader, that's awesome. But for someone who's making, you know, I, I, no, I'd like to shepherd some people, coach some people. The goal then is to have that person be trained as they're going into the role or before they're going into the role, not when they get into the role. Now, that's good. The, the tension with that is sometimes um, people are more attentive to training when they know they need it, and sometimes right, you don't sure. know you need that it just until in you're time into the role. Thing. Yeah, the just in time training, uh, which is a which is a um, a paradigm of thinking about training, but you still can have a sense of where the person's moving to and start having um, conversations and experiences and coaching and learning for them. So it's not only about the knowledge; it's about experiences that you're giving the person. You know, it, so it it could be, hey, they. Um, before they are this per leader, they they do these things. You know, it's not just they read these books. Yeah, and it, it seems that like in, in a large church like Mariners, you obviously have developed a system. You know, and I've got to see a little, a little bit. Of, like I said, I'm I'm going to be talking to the interns. Um, you know, I'm guessing just starting on the staff level system, but there's a whole you know different level system for v v volunteers and leaders and all that sort of stuff. Um, so um, take us down though to. When you're giving advice and counsel to that pastor of the smaller church, um, you know, that 
uh, and again, by the way, 300, just so you know, is, is about three times the size of a typical church in the United States. But when we talk about church staff and the number of listeners, that's why sometimes we'll stay in that space. But so that two to 300 person church, um, so is it like, okay, I'm thinking about, I made that, that, that graph you talked about, and I'm thinking about what this person, what, what this leader, what she is going to, to develop in, and I want to invite her to meetings where we're doing those things. And I want to, I want to, you know, give her opportunity to try those things or, or what, what does that look like? What does it look like practically in, in a place where you don't have like staff members assigned to these things at a large church like Mariners? Yeah, I would, I would um, utilize resources that you can get as opposed to feeling like you have to be the right. source of knowledge for all. So let, let, let's, let's take one competency. Let's, let's say it's, um, somebody wants to have as a competency gospel articulation, mm-hmm. you know, um, and th- that church is leader, is volunteer, leader, coach. They're, they're, they're saying, hey, Eric, we don't have five levels or we've got three because we, we have less people and we, and we don't need that many levels. Um, okay, great. So gospel articulation, leader, or, I mean, sorry, volunteer, leader, coach, volunteer, um, we just want them to be able to articulate that they understand the gospel. And it's like basically half of a page of your doctrinal statement, a volunteer knows that. Um, leader, you want them to read a short book by John Stott on the gospel. Coach, you want them to be able to articulate the gospel and they've read this book, you know, like basically you, you have different, but it doesn't have to be super complex and it doesn't have to be you, um, you teaching three different courses, you know, right. You that, and that's what people, I think that's what people hear in there yeah. and it just becomes overwhelming, but in a sense you're making a checklist and I don't mean that in the worst, right. in the bad sense of the word, but in the positive sense of the word, you're saying, if you want to continue to develop, these are the things we want you to engage to develop, Right. Yeah, it could be, um, hey, for that first person, we're just going to ask them to listen to this podcast. You may record as the pastor a 15-minute podcast that everybody listens to on gospel. And then the next, the leader level, they may um, need to read a book, you know, and the third level, they need to lead a book discussion with others. And and then what you also are able to do, Ed, is you can, because you now have this pipeline, you can utilize the coaches to do the coaching, you know, so you, you no longer, you aren't saying you're the one who's doing all the training. In fact, if you are, then you don't really have layers of leadership. Right. Everybody, everybody re- reports to you. That's, which is not what you want. I think for some people, um, this sounds horrifying. The idea of creating a chart on a, maybe a graph paper and say, these are the things and this is the steps. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I get that. Cause I, I mean, I, I, um, you know, people have different wirings, different personalities, different giftings, but you can't really, um, you can't, whatever size, once you pass a church of 35 or 75, certain barriers, 125, get up 200, there comes a point when you can't do this just relationally anymore because you're, you don't have the time and capacity to engage each individual. So, but people here, they see, you know, Jesus spent time with three people. I want to spend time with those three people and those three people will spend time with their three people and that will change the world. And I want to say, yes, that's true. That's a discipleship paradigm that I get, I like, but when you get to, at the end of the day, what's a pretty complex organization, once you get to 125 people, you have to have a plan. That yeah. plan is best done when it's written when it's consistent and people know what to expect and how to continue to grow as leaders. Am I, am I overstating it too much or, or, or tell me what you think? Uh, no, it's perfect. And what you said is exactly true. We de- this uh, leadership pipeline doesn't eliminate one-on-one or one-on-three. It actually helps systemize it because you have coaches who can care for leaders and leaders who can care for volunteers because you, it, it's the Jethro to Moses. Mo, Moses, man, what you're doing is wrong. You're gonna, you're gonna wear yourself out, out, and the people aren't gonna go home satisfied. So, not only is this bad for you, it's bad for the people. If you don't figure out how to put five in charge of ten, and ch- ten, ten in charge of fifty, and fifty in charge of hundred, you gotta, you gotta have some type of framework, Moses. So, if, if I get totally get, man, I, if I'm a pastor, I'm listening to this, like, oh my gosh, I, I got a sermon this week, and I, I got this retreat I'm speaking at leadership pipeline. So 
actually let that cause you to make it as simple as possible. Make it as streamlined and as simple as possible, because the more simple it is, the more actionable it will be anyway. So, I mean, we have a couple of them given in the book Design to Lead that that really um, talks a lot about leadership pipeline. So you can see one in there. Actually, it's it's really what we use at Mariners. We use the same the same competencies that we uh, Kevin Peck and I wrote about in Design to Lead. And the yeah, reason you didn't is, write that. You wrote that before you came to Mariners. If I, I did. Recall. I yeah. wrote that. So book. it's interesting you implemented that here. And just so you, you, uh, Daniel mentioned that in the introduction. So if there was, that's the book that I actually use, Design to Lead, I use in uh, my DMN classes on helping pastors develop leadership structures and strategies. So it's really helpful. Kevin Peck is at uh, Austin, Austin Stone. Texas, right? Yeah, okay. he's, a, he's lead pastor at Austin Stone. Yeah. So I didn't come, Ed, and say, hey, use these competencies. Um, but we were in a meeting about leadership pipeline. And I mean, I think somebody on the team said, Guys, do we want to create our own competencies? Or are we just going to use these? Because these these are based on research and they're already really good. And so, it, it, so don't think that if you're like, man, this sounds like a lot of work. My own team was like, let's just use those competencies yeah. because we don't want to spend two days c- coming up with our own. Yeah, and I think that's you know, pastors often have a you know non invented here syndrome, and it's like I gotta I gotta get the graph paper and make the the chart, and and you don't. Um, I think the work is. Is actually just, and you might want to, you know, if you're in a Pentecostal church, you might have different, some different spiritual yes. competencies you want to address. If you're in a Reformed church, you want to talk about what the Reformed faith and doctrine is. I get that. Totally. Um, but at the same time, you have off the shelf starting points for so many of these things. But what I would say, Eric, is that the idea of a pipeline, I think, is is new to people, but it's ironically not a new idea. I think the language is new. Like, uh, but you know, if you if you look back to Flake's formula of Sunday right. school 100 years ago, it would be like you need one leader, and then you need leader yeah. leaders, and you need all this sort of stuff. And so, so don't be intimidated by the language. You want you don't want to call it a pipeline, call it a pathway. What pathway do you want people to walk yeah. to engage well? You were going to say something else. Go ahead. Yeah, call it a plan. Call it. Um, don't be paralyzed by a blank sheet of paper. Um, and you have some of the elements already in place. You you already have levels of leadership at your church, you already have felt, man, I, what am I going to, what am I giving my leaders? You've already felt that you've already, um, you've already had people say, Hey, we should, we should have our leaders read this book. You've already had that. So if you have a framework from now, now when someone comes and says, Hey, why don't we, why don't we have all our leaders watch this study? You now have a framework to help you make that decision. Um, as opposed, which is why it's actually more complex if you don't have a framework. Yeah, and I, th- I think that's key. Is that there's um, people sort of want to know what's next. I mean, I think one of the things that really came out of some of the the like even you look at like Navigators Two Seven, the most popular discipleship program in the world. It's this is this week, this is next week, this is next week. I mean that that um, familiarity of pathway and pipeline actually breeds comfort and confidence in a congregation. And I think that that matters. So, um, so how then would you think in terms of like, you know, someone's a pastor, uh, you know, a lot of our, our listeners are not the senior pastor, um, but they would have significant influence to say, this is what we could do. Or maybe they are the senior pastor and they're talking to their elders or their vestry or their, or their board or whatever. So would you, how would you um, convince, I mean, maybe they're listening to this podcast, I'm one of them, go get designed to lead. Uh, look at some of the pipeline stuff out there. Our friend Todd Atkins, we've mentioned, you know, he's got some great stuff on pipeline. Um, and but how would you suggest they then bring this to a congregation and say, okay, we need to be more strategic, intentional, whatever word you want to use. And here's what I would suggest: What would those words look like to try to cast a vision for people who just want to love Jesus and just want to care for one another? And now you're you're just making it so corporate, Eric Geiger. Why would we have to do this? That's that's great. I'm glad you I'm glad you asked the question. Because um, we've never mentioned leadership pipeline or or design to lead, and I'm the author at my own church. So we never. This is never taught. This is the operating system beneath the surface. This is not um, a sermon series. This is sim- similar to how I would have viewed simple church back in the day. I mean, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I never. I never preached a sermon on that. That was that was like insider behind the scenes nerd stuff to help pastors think about, hey, you got a bunch of programs, be sure they actually take people somewhere. Um, this is, hey, you got a bunch of leaders, why don't you have a plan to develop them? Uh, not, it's like, hey, you should do have, you should have hey, this. 
you have leaders. You're going to stand before Jesus for them. Um, hey, this, we're not we're not going to do this perfectly, but let's 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 call a play. Let's have a plan. Um, but no, I have not taught. I have not. That those competencies have never been taught from the stage. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. No, it's um, this is how we we framework things. How we right. we invite people in. Now, so this is operating system, yep. and then they see the interface, whatever that is. I went a little computer nerd there, but they're seeing the graphical interface. So, so then, but you know, the pastor of the church of uh, of hundred who's listening right now, or the you know the associate pastor of the church of four hundred is going to now persuade somebody that we should do it. So one thing is, just don't lead with, this is going to be all we're talking about. We're not going to walk around talking about pipelines at church. But so how would I persuade people that, because this would be a tricky part for a lot of people. How do I persuade people? I would say, let me suggest redesign to lead and then talk some about it. But how would I persuade them to take this step? Why is it necessary? We are, we are um, commanded by Jesus to make disciples what kind of disciples are we wanting to make? At some point in someone's discipleship journey, they they surely are moving into serving within the church and they are progressing into influencing others who they are serving. How are we developing them to become the leaders that God has invited them to be? And in a way that not only is better for the church, but really you see this in the book, we talk about we're to create leaders for the world. We're to develop leaders and deploy leaders for the world. And so as we develop great leaders, they're not only a blessing for the church, but ultimately they're a blessing for society and for and for the world. So what, a, I mean, the grand vision to me would be our church is going to mentor and disciple and develop people who bless the world, you know? So it, this is not about let's have better organization for greeters. <laughs> It's a bigger picture than that. It's a bigger, once bigger vision than that. Yeah, a church manual for a uh, CRC church. It's a Christian Reformed church, wonderful denomination, the Grand Rapids area. And someone gave me this manual for this CRC church. And I've never been to the church. I just happened to have the manual. I think it was like an example they gave. And I've never seen a, a manual with more policy and procedures in it. I mean, people think the detail about how you can request the building for a wedding. Here's the process to get there. Here's the procedure to get there. Here's the nose, automatic nose, automatic yeses. And and I just thought, I mean, I get why people do that. I'm not, I'm not, and, and I love the CRC. So very pro CRC. It was just a manual someone gave me. And I would say uh, the amount of time that people put into policy and procedures for building and facilities should be dwarfed by the amount of time we put into uh, maybe not policies and procedures, but pathways and pipelines to develop people, but that requires a shift of thinking. And that's yeah. a vision moment. So last thought from you kind of is, how do we help people see the vision of leadership, discipleship and leadership development as worth this level of yeah. energy and effort? Well, I think that illustration is super compelling um, and convicting really, because there's a lot of talk that happens in churches, even ones that, um, that do care about leadership development, you can easily drift towards policies and procedures, and and they are um, they are important. But to your point, way less so than developing people. That's ultimately what what we're in this for. That's ultimately what Jesus has called us to. And, and to use the to take the illustration that you just gave uh, one step further, we would probably say to that church, "Hey, it's good to have a building policy, but it could probably be two pages." And I would say, "Hey, the leadership development pipeline." That, it doesn't need to be 38 pages either. I mean, we we can have a, a, a sim, it, the, the more simple and readable it is, the the, the, the more helpful it's going to be. The 38 pages one isn't going to be isn't going to be helpful. Um, the grand the grand vision that I would say is, and it's a caution as well. We never want to separate discipleship from leadership development, or, or we never want to decouple the two. In other words, we don't want to view. Um, which one are you working on, discipleship or leadership development? We want to view leadership development as a subset of discipleship. And the reason that's important is if you if you get consumed with developing leaders apart from discipleship, you can actually create more skilled but less sanctified people. Um, you can create people whose competencies outpace their character. And so we we do not want competencies outpacing character or skills outpacing sanctification 
And the, the, the way you stop that from happening is you view leadership development as a subset of discipleship. So yes, we must train people, but if we have a leadership pipeline, that helps us train people to do the skills, but connected to how we're discipling them. So we are we are developing people to be hospitable greeters, but that's connected to how we're discipling them in the understanding and all that Jesus first welcomed them, that Jesus was first hospitable towards them. So it the reason the the grand vision for leadership pipeline is, man, you're going to train these people to do something. Have it connected to discipleship. Have it connected to who they're becoming as people, not only what they're doing. Good helpful words from uh, from my pastor and uh, and my friend and super helpful. Again, read pick up design to lead uh, as well. Thanks for listening to the Stetzer Church Leaders podcast. You've been listening to Eric Geiger. Be sure to check out his books, Design to Lead and Simple Church. You can learn more about Eric at ericgeiger.com. Thanks again for listening to the Sets of Church Leaders podcast. You can find more interviews as well as other great content for ministry leaders at churchleaders.com slash podcast. And again, if you found our conversation today helpful, we'd love for you to take a few moments, leave us a review. That'll help other ministry leaders find us and benefit from our content. We'll see you in the next episode. You've been listening to the Stetzer Church Leaders Podcast. For more great interviews, as well as articles, videos, and free resources, visit our website at churchleaders.com. Thanks for listening.